first thing I'm going to do is a little prep. I'm going to clean with a flap disc on the edge and near the weld. And then I'm going to give a wipe down with acetone. You can also use alcohol, but a wipe down after this really helps. Cleaner the better. Same thing with filler rods. They can look clean, but oftentimes they have a drawing compound on them and they're, they're not really clean. So it's always good practice. All right, I'm going to use a aluminum angle block here for sort of a just a, an easy way to, to clamp these and hold them together and tack them. And also it's going to pull a lot of heat out of this and the thing's not going to be very hot when I'm through with it. And it's just a good idea. It's not just a crutch for you know, a heat sink, it is actually great practice if you're building something, if you can, if you have long enough clamps, if you're building a tank, a reservoir, a box, if you can get angle clamped in on the inside of an outside corner like this, aluminum angle, it really makes the weld go a lot better and, and actually limits distortion quite a bit. Can't always do it, not always practical, but when you can, it makes a big difference. All right, this weld I'm gonna dip very often. Each one of those ripples in a bead is a freeze line and the more often you add rod as you travel the tighter the bead the tighter the ripples will be that's all those little ripples are is a freeze line the puddle chills a little bit when the rod is added and that's all they are now the more often you add them the more even the bead is going to be but it, 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 you get to a point sometimes when it's somewhat impractical because you can't feed rod that often all the time depending on what position you're in how comfortable you are and all that so just for the sake of the example, I welded half of it with really often dabs. And for the second half, I'm going to travel a long way and not going to add rod nearly as often. I'm using about the same amperage, about 105 amps for this whole exercise. But here I'm traveling way out farther in between dabs. And that's neither right or wrong. It just, just for the sake of argument, just to show the difference here. Sometimes you can actually get down in the bottom of a corner joint like this by traveling out far like that at lower amperage. It's just different strokes for different folks, different applications. We're going to look at the difference here in the contour of the surface because a lot of people argue that the, the wide scallops there are, are actually a defect. That they're really low points that are stress risers. And there, there's some truth to that, but I'm going to look at just how much of a difference there is here by sectioning this thing right down the middle of that weld and we're going to look at a side view of that profile there. This will only take a second here. Just putting a line on it and cutting it with a little Walter zip disc and then I'm going to put it on a belt sander, smooth it off, get it right down to the center line and we'll turn it sideways here and we'll magnify it to about roughly 20x or so. And you can see there's a little difference there but it's not huge. There's the tight ripple bead and here is the the other view of it, very smooth on the surface, hardly any variation. There's the loose ripple bead, and here's the difference there. So it's there's there's a difference, it's just not like night and day. But let's end this video on a note where this is how I would kind of weld one something in between the two, something more reasonable. I can actually feed rod between my fingers in between dabs here and still keep the tip of the rod shielded with the argon. And that is a big deal sometimes to prevent oxidation of the tip of that rod. It's a bigger deal with some alloys than others. Now I am using a clear cup here. I didn't mention that earlier. It's obvious. You've seen it. But one of the benefits here is not only does it provide really good gas shielding for a number 8 gas lens cup, but it also kind of helps you light the way and see the seam, the joint, the crack, the groove, whatever it is you're welding. It's kind of like a light bulb, a floodlight bulb that sheds a little light on the area. And for a guy my age, that helps a whole lot. I've been offering these for sale on my store for a while now at weldmonger.com. What you saw me use here in this video was an air-cooled 17 style torch with the adapter kit. You can see the o-ring there. There's a groove on that on that uh, collet body and that's how they work. If you have a smaller torch like a 9 or a 20 you won't need the adapter kit. They just slide over the, the collet body with a o-ring. So I, I encourage you to give them a try if you're interested at all in using a clear type cup. I really like them. You can learn more at weldmonger.com. I'll put a link in the description box of this YouTube video where you can go straight to the page where you can see that cup. I appreciate you watching this video. Appreciate your support. We'll see you next time.